So I just got my camera and the ring light. Hey guys, it's Izini. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is not a tutorial, but we are going to be looking at the basics of making a tutorial video. So I'm basically going to be walking you through my filming setup. Now, I'm not the best at this. I do not even have um, professional equipment or anything of the sort. But I do have a few tips that could guide you, especially if you're just starting out as a YouTuber or you already make video content and you still have issues, maybe figuring out your lighting or your background situation or anything that's just, you know, something that beginners usually struggle with, right? Starting with my camera, which is the Canon EOS 1300D which is also known as the Canon Rebel C6 and uh, I'm going to tell you for free that this camera is actually not the best camera for anyone who's looking to start making videos or anything else. So I'm sure you're probably wondering, oh then why do you use it, right? <laughs> so here's the thing, when I got my camera, I didn't have so much information about um, cameras that work well for videos and at the time i was still very active on my blog so i basically just wanted something that could take great pictures and this camera is literally a good entry level camera for anybody who is still in the process of figuring out how to take a good picture and you know get it to look good and stuff but over time i became more interested in making videos and my budget was really slim so i didn't have the luxury of getting a new video camera at that point in time so i had to leverage what i had and it was this camera so i fell back on it figured out ways to to make it work for me i mean considering the fact that it has no autofocus it has no microphone jack it has been a struggle like real struggle but then again this video is not a canon camera review so I'm just going to skip all of those details and get to why we're here today. So without wasting much of our time, let me just quickly show you how I interface this camera with my laptop and how I'm able to use my laptop as a monitor to basically see everything I do when I'm filming. So this software is called the Canon EOS Utility Software. It's available for virtually every Canon DSLR camera. So what it does for you is that it serves as your monitor and it uses a USB connection to just link to your camera and then you're able to view everything that you're doing. So I'm going to show you guys how that works. Nearly you turn your camera on, it pops up like this and shows these three prompts. So you're going to select remote shooting and when you select remote shooting, you come over here and click live view shoot. So immediately you click live view shoot, you'd be able to see everything that your camera can see just as it is over here now. The great thing about this software is that it basically lets you stay where you are and control your camera from any point at all. So let's say if I want to change my shutter speed, all I have to do is come over here and select which one I want, right? If I want to change my aperture, I come over here and make a selection same goes for iso for picture style and anything else that i would want to change right the major problem this camera has is that it doesn't autofocus so you have to always manually focus it so let's say for example i want to show you guys this um living conditioner from as i am now i've pushed it forward but then it doesn't autofocus right so you guys can't quite see what is on the product so what i usually do is that i come over here and then when you look at this place where you have on and on, this is where your focus is. So you just click on. So when you click on, you'd notice that it is now focused on the product, right? So this is how I focus my stuff. It's stressful, but I mean, when you don't have an option, it's always great to um, improvise and utilize what is at your disposal. So I'm going to focus back on myself and I'll do the exact same thing. So go to on and then keep myself in one place 
and not move left and right and just focus it again. So I'm back in focus, as you can see. For the other settings of my camera, like the aperture, the ISO and shutter speed, the first thing I always put in place is my video system. So there are basically two video systems, right? There's the NTSC and then there's the PAL. Because I live in Nigeria, which happens to be in the PAL region, I always select the PAL region. Now keep in mind that there are no hard and fast rules around this. You can basically use any one you want to use, depending on what you're going for, right? But I prefer to use the power region because it allows me to shoot at 25 frames per second. And it is with this 25 frames per second that I now set my shutter speed, right? So your shutter speed should be twice your FPS. So this means that if you're shooting at 25 FPS, your shutter speed should be 50 under perfect lighting conditions. Right, but in my own case, I have a four point lighting situation here, so I don't know if this is a perfect lighting condition or not. If you ask me, I would like to think that a perfect lighting condition is natural light when you're out there and God is there with you. My shutter speed is not at 50, it's actually at 60 because when I place it at 50, it's usually too bright and it just takes away all the details from my video. So I like to keep it at 60 and at 60, my complexion is just normal, the way I would look on a normal day. Then for my aperture, which is the f-stop, I never change it. It's always at 1.8. My ISO is always at 100. Another thing that I would want to talk about is my picture style. So the picture style, there are so many options to choose from. There's neutral, there's auto, there's faithful, there's monochrome, quite a number of them. So I like to shoot in neutral. So normally when you select neutral, everything looks washed out, your skin looks pale and all that. So what I always do is that after I've selected the neutral, I then go back to picture mode, like I want to take a regular picture. And at that point, I set my white balance to fluorescent because the um, light that I use can be likened to fluorescent bulbs and then I take a picture of this gray shirt over here. So after I've taken a picture of this gray shirt, I then customize that picture as my custom white balance setting. Take the camera's dial back to video mode and once I'm in video mode, I just customize my white balance to the white balance that I previously set with the gray shirt. So immediately I do that, everything is vibrant and detailed as it should be. So yeah, um, that's about it with my camera. Uh, what else? <clears throat> so we're going to move over to my background now. When it comes to background, the two very common types are the environmental set and the, I think, solid background set. My neighbor has become a carpenter. Please just disregard any loud noises you hear. Like I was saying, for your background set, you want to make sure that you're comfortable with whatever background situation you have going on, because it's your video after all. So if you're not comfortable in your set, you're definitely not going to um, get the best results out of your video. So you need to be comfortable. You need to feel at home. So if a solid color works for you, go with that. If an environmental set works for you, go with that. Just basically do what rocks your boat. But in my own case, I use a solid background set and that's because I'm majorly filming tutorials for most of the time. So I personally feel like when you're filming tutorials and you have a solid color background set, it's less distracting because it helps your viewers to focus on you instead of on the background. So this background that you see now is called the doll face satin type fabric. It's inexpensive, it measures about two and a half yards. I'm going to show you. And that's equivalent to 90 inches on a meter rule or a tape rule, whichever one you choose to use, they both have the same calibration, I think. For the method of placement, I always use a thumb tack to attach it to the wall. And that's basically all I do. So I attach one end of it first, then I pull taut to the other end and just 
secure with the thumb tacks again. Now for my lighting, which I think is something a lot of people are really interested in. When I started, I watched a couple of YouTube videos about light positions and all of that. But just keep in mind that when it comes to lighting, the most common type of lighting is a three-point lighting. So for the three-point lighting, you have your key light and that's light that has the highest intensity. So usually this light should be directed towards your face. But again, it could be directed in any other position depending on the effect you're trying to create. Now, in this case, my key light is my ring light because my ring light happens to be the brightest light that I have here and is directed towards my face, but not directly at my face. So it's propped at an angle up there and then tilted forwards. And the reason I kept it like that is because normally when it's directly in front of me, guys, I wear glasses, so it always reflects on my glasses and that can be distracting sometimes. So there's the key light, there's a the fill light, and then there's the rim light. So the key light, I just explained that. My fill lights are these two soft boxes in front of me. So you can also refer to them as shadow boxes, just to understand the role that they play in your lighting setup. You could have one fill light, you could have two. Basically just work with your budget. And what these two lights do is that when they come on, Whatever shadows that my key light must have created on the background while it's lighting my face, these two lights just cancels out any of those shadows. So one works for the left side and the other one works for the right side. Then the rim light, which is the light behind me, and that is my hair light. So this one lights the top of my hair and just helps to further separate me from the background. So it doesn't look like I'm disappearing into the background. So that's just what that light does. So if you don't have one, you can work without one until you're able to afford one. You don't need to have everything. You can actually work with just one light and switch it such that it serves the purpose you want it to serve. So let's say you're a makeup artist. If it's a one point lighting system you have, you want to make sure that it focuses on your face so that you know when you make your videos people know oh this is what it is about and then if you make hair videos do the same thing make sure that the focus is on where the focus should be to make it easy for anyone who probably wants to set up their lights exactly the way mine is set up i have the dimensions so i'm just going to read it out for the two soft boxes they are at a height of 58 inches off the ground. So when you measure from the ground to base of the box, it's 58 inches for both lights. And then the distance between them is 44 inches. Then for the swivel where I'm seated to the soft box, diagonally measures 38 inches. I don't know if this makes sense or I'm just speaking math language. Please, if there's anything you don't understand, please just ask me in the comments. Be cool. Oh. To encourage anyone out there who is just starting out or looking to start a YouTube channel, you honestly don't have to buy all of this at the same time. I'll be honest with you. When I started out, I just had my smartphone and natural light. I filmed with that, like regardless of how the quality was, I just wanted to make sure that I was doing something. Even though it wasn't the quality I wanted, but I was doing it and I was working towards getting something better. So like I said earlier, when I got my camera, my budget was really slim and I didn't even have a job at the time. I didn't have money in my savings or anywhere. So I just got my camera and the ring light. So I was using just the ring light. Then over time, I got one soft box. After a few months, I got the second soft box and then the hair light. So basically start with what you have don't feel pressured to um, compare your videos or your progress to anyone else's trust me if you have just one light source search youtube videos that show you how to optimize a one point lighting system there are so many options just make sure you're searching make sure you're looking for answers to your questions and don't just sit back and feel sorry for yourself because that has never helped anyone if you ask me that's it guys now i know i'm supposed to include my audio <laughs> but why i have not included that is because i'm really still trying to figure it out and i don't think i have profound information on it yet so i'm not going to share it with you until i am sure so i don't mislead anyone 
But keep in mind that this camera does not have a microphone jack. I think I mentioned it already. So if you've probably watched any of my previous videos, you'd notice that they are voiced over and I am only just starting to speak in my videos. I have not changed my camera, but I was able to find a little hack that is enabling me sound as good as I do right now. So when I am very sure of it and I have everything else figured out, I'll have a video on it for you guys, okay? But until then, let me know what other things you would want to know about creating your own YouTube filming home studio. Also, if you found this video helpful, please share it with your friends so they can have access to this kind of information as well. On that note, I am going to be signing off. So bye guys. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah.